hello friends welcome to the channel in today's video we are going to be talking about dual boot and then why we use it we'll also see how we can um, implement this as well now dual boot simply means um, you will be able to install and run multiple operating systems on pc so you could have um, windows running with mac OS or windows with linux or even all of them um, all three at once and then the pc should work fine and so with dual boot what happens is that when you are turning on the pc you get to select the operating system that you want to use and then throughout that period that operating system uses um most of the resources that are available to the pc now why do we use um dual boot one reason will be to have um, different workspaces so certain people will like to game on their um, windows pc but we'll also want to do development and then testing of products on their Linux based distros. Another reason is the fact that certain softwares can be found on just some um, operating system, just like the Adobe um, Suite, be it Premiere Pro or Photoshop, they can only be found on Windows and Mac OS. Now, you also have the fact that um, if you want your softwares to be able to run, well on different operating systems you will definitely have to test them to see what happens um, to make sure they run smoothly for the uh, users and then another use case is that um, certain people like to try out different um, operating systems to see what they can get from there now the next thing is for us to um, implement dual boot and then first of all let's um, create our bootable drive and then we can continue from there all right let's go on to talk about the bootable process it simply means that you are converting your iso file into a form that can be placed on the storage device for the os installation for most operating systems that we have nowadays you need a storage device of 8 gigs or more it could be a pen drive or a hard disk but make sure that if you are using a hard disk you select the least usb hard drives option otherwise it wouldn't show under the device menu under the boot selection we provide the iso file we are using and then for the partition scheme you have two options the gpt and the mbr the gpt usually is found on newer versions of pcs and the mbr on older versions but for those that aren't sure of what partition scheme their internal um, storage device uses there will be another video to show you how it's done um the next thing to select is the file system it's usually advisable to use the ntfs if you should go with the fat um, file system it is likely that you will get a file that is uh, more than four gigs and so the process stops at some point in time now we can start the process and wait for it to finish so the app is done creating the bootable drive and then we can turn off the pc to continue with the dual boot process all right once we have the pc turned off we need to access the bios to make some changes for HP PCs like mine, you can press the F10 key to take you to the BIOS. And then for other manufacturers, you may need to check online to be able to get it. Once you are in the BIOS, you need to turn off the secure boot option. And also make sure that the USB boot option is enabled. You can also decide to change the boot order as well. And then you save the changes. So during the restart process, make sure to select the boot device. That's if you didn't change the order. And then the PC should boot from the bootable device. Since we have Ubuntu as a bootable OS, the grab menu um, loads if you are getting the chance to try or install Ubuntu. On startup, you get to select your language and also change the keyboard layout based on your computer's keyboard. The next menu allows you to connect to the internet. That's if you would like to check for updates during the installation process. Well, for people that are new to the Linux based distro, you might want to try it out before you continue with the installation. Also, this version of um, Ubuntu, which is the version 24, allows you to continue the installation using the YAML so it runs like a script. We'll go with the first option, which is the interactive installation. The default selection option um, just provides you with some few basic apps that are needed for the operating system to run well. We'll go with the extended version. Ubuntu also tries to install some form of uh, 
third party drivers as if they are available so for this interface and then the next one i'll advise you to be very careful so that you don't delete your data by mistake since we are going with the dual boot we'll go with the second option within this interface let's get a partition where the ubuntu will be installed on previously i already had it and it had some issues so we are going to delete that partition and then create it there again and then you should make sure that the ext4 option is selected for windows based installation we'll go with the ntfs and then also the mount point should be the root directory which is the forward slash if you have a pc that has a small size of ram it's advisable to include some form of swap space so that when the ram gets full it uses the swap space to store some information let's go on to the next page where we get to input our personal details and then click next you select your time zone based on your location and then on the last page you get to review the choices you have made if everything looks fine to you, you can click on install to start the process. Once the installation is done, you can continue to try out Ubuntu or you restart the PC. And make sure you remove the bootable device. So if everything went as planned, during the restart, you should see the grab menu providing you with two options, the Ubuntu and then the Windows Boot Manager. We'll select Ubuntu to finalize the setup. Now we have everything finalized and then we can go back to the window to see if it still works. The window side too works fine and then we are done with the dual boot process. In a subsequent video we are going to look at certain things that you should do after a clean install of Ubuntu on your PC. Thank you guys for watching this video and then see you in the next one.